Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Welcome to our weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. We are pleased to welcome Dr. David Zava, founder and current lab director of ZRT Laboratory. Welcome, Dr. Zava. Thanks for having me. When were you first drawn to the field of healthcare? I've been involved in everything related to science. I, as a kid, used to go to the store and, and buy the Scientific Americans and then read them front to cover. And then, um, so graduate school, I was involved in science and it was really during the the Nixon era when um, he declared war on cancer. We still haven't managed to defeat cancer. Um, And I thought, well, okay, well, I'll go into cancer research. And that was of of great interest to me. And then I worked on chemical carcinogens that cause cancer in in people because that was an environmental thing. Remember back in the 60s and 70s. And then um, got more focused on chemicals that look a lot like estrogen that may cause breast cancer. So then I started on my postdoc back in the 70s. And I was interested in how chemicals or how estrogen is associated with increased risk of breast cancer. So most women are afraid, oh, you know, I get too much estrogen. I'm going to get breast cancer. So it's a lot of that work. So I was looking at cells and culture. I was looking at breast biopsies from women. We were, we were extracting proteins and we were looking at estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors and how, you know, the body responds to all these kinds of things. So that was, that was four years of that really, really looking at how the hormones are activating receptor and increasing cell proliferation in, in specifically breast cancer. So from there, I went on to uh, Europe and lived in Switzerland, and I was the lab director of the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research in Bern, Switzerland, wh- where I did a lot of the same kind of research, but it was more uh, clinically orientated. So I was very interested in hormones. I mean, again, the whole issue of estrogen going up in pregnancy and estrogen driving the growth of tumors and progesterone having some uh, growth inhibitory action. So I got, I got interested in hormones uh, and I was always interested in hormones and breast cancer. And then um, I decided, uh, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start looking at um, ways of, of, of detecting hormones in women in relationship to uh, their risk for breast cancer. So I wrote a grant a small business innovative research grant. I got it funded. Uh, And it actually was the grant that allowed me to start looking at um, hormones, the the hormonal milieu and breast cancer. So everybody, and I started lecture. I wrote a book with John Lee about this um, and that made it real popular. So I was doing these assays to just doing them from, you know, from not from a clinical perspective, but just, doing them because we were doing research on this is this is the grant that I had. And then after that, um, so I developed some really cool assays for estradiol and progesterone. In fact, actually, I, I developed them in saliva um, because I wanted to be able to look at enough people and I knew women, you know, they're not going to give up body parts, uh, you know, to be able to look in tissue. So I needed a simple way to be able to collect that sample. So I got the grant. Uh, I, I developed the saliva assay as I said I would. Um, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the place I was working for, they didn't want to do the breast cancer work anymore. And that was really what I wanted to do. So I left and came to Portland and, and set up a laboratory, uh, ZRT laboratory, um, and uh, started doing, started doing uh, testing. Um, because there was just this enormous demand, you know, every woman wanted to have their hormones tested. That's, you know, Suzanne Summers and other people, you know, that era. 
uh, I was right in the middle of that um, Christian North of all those people that were, you know, talking about hormones and, and health. Uh, so I sort of jumped into this stream uh, of not just the relationship of estrogens and progesterone to breast cancer, but estrogens and progesterone or testosterone or whatever in relationship to a thousand other things, you know, how you sleep, you know, how you feel, you start having hot flashes and, and you, you know, you feel good, you feel bad. And so, um, so I, I opened a business. I had no clue about business and it wasn't my goal whatsoever to do this, but there was just such a demand for it. And I said, oh, well, okay, I guess I better learn something about business. And just one thing after another, and it, and it, you know, I was really on the J curve at the bottom. I was in the very bottom of the J curve in terms of money because I started with uh, $50,000 that I had from my home that I sold in California and moved, and moved to Portland. And so I was working with people that um, produce topical progesterone because I was a big advocate of topical progesterone. I knew it worked. Um, a lot of people didn't believe it worked because they couldn't see it in serum. Um, and so, and so, yeah, one thing led to another and, and this, this thing just took off and grew and I had to learn how to be a business person. People tell me, they say, Oh, you're a really good business person. I said, no, I'm not, you know, because it's just the way things happen. And a lot of people came to ZRT uh, to study with me and then went on to do and develop their own laboratories. There's four or five people, you know, that have developed successful labs out there. You can pretty much name all the other saliva testing labs. They started here. They started with my training them on, you know, how to do it. But we, we, we went beyond saliva testing. We, back in 2002, we started doing uh, assays for blood spot. So that's yeah, just prick of the finger, put the blood on the filter card. You, you can do hormone testing like that. It allowed us to do not only the steroid hormones, being estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, DHA, cortisol, but now we could do insulin. Now we could do um, a lot of other different kinds of, of things uh, that we couldn't do with just in, in saliva. So um, I also wanted about 2006, I wanted to be able to go back to looking at those metabolites of estrogen that we knew were associated with breast cancer. So um, I bought some mass specs, we, we, and those are expensive machines. And so we developed that type of an assay. You know, I worked with, uh, you know, the person who now you probably hear of Dutch testing, you know, Mark Newman, I hired him to actually start some of that work. So that was all part of what I was, was doing there. And so, um, and it's been, a, it's been a long journey. I've been 22 years now at ZRT. Um, and I can tell you it is, it's difficult. You know, we've, we've made plenty of money. You know, we have, you know, our own institute. And now um, we're doing a huge number of research studies with uh, universities, we're doing it with um, uh, National Institutes of Health, uh, National Institutes of Environmental Health uh, Sciences. We're looking at menstrual cycle mapping and young girls. There's just a lot of stuff that we're, we're doing that has to do with the brain, it has to do with the breast, it has to do with the uterus, it has to do with just overall health and well being. So that's kind of where we're, that, that's where we're at now. CRT has been an exhibitor at the A4M conferences in recent years. Can you talk a little about A4M attendees and why they are a good audience for ZRT? Yeah, they're a good audience because they're they're the, the cowboys and cowgirls of you know of medicine. They're they're the ones that are not afraid to do something different. They're the ones on the forefront of medicine. Um, and I call them cowboys and cow. I mean, it's like the Wild West. Um, so they're, they're doing things that are, that are um, going to be considered the norm in allopathic medicine in the, in the, in the future. They're not your, your, not your conventional physicians. They're, they're out front of, you know, allopathic medicine. 
Well, thank you so much, Dr. Zava, for sharing your insight and expertise with us today. We truly appreciate your time. Sure. And thank you to all of our listeners. Until next time.